Also, this strawberry tree you have here, yes. uh, they get massive and they grow very fast. Um, so definitely when you plant that, you know, the avocado, you will probably never see it at its mature height because it'll take 50 or 60 years, you know, if it gets there. But this strawberry tree, it'll probably be 30 feet in two or three years. Okay. So definitely be, you know, cautious about where you plant that. And I mean, they're great. If you plant it on the edge of this fence, you'll be able to have uh, cherries for yourself and your neighbors and the whole neighborhood. It'd be a nice shade tree. I was even wondering if I should just get a large pot for it, uh, like a 25 gallon pot to keep it in instead of planting it in the ground where it's gonna get so big that it's not controllable. You can definitely do that. A 20, like that size pot, you could grow this tree out in. When you're growing a perennial plant long-term in a pot, uh, one thing to consider are the roots um, and the type of pot you choose. So in a pot like this, you know, a plastic nursery pot, the roots are gonna grow out to the edges and hit that curve, and then they're gonna start to grow around the edge of that because in you know, their spatial reasoning, they're still progressing along, you know, they're still growing, but really they're just becoming root bound in that pot. And so if you were to grow out a tree for many years in a pot like that, you would need to take it out of the pot occasionally. And well, you could either put it in a larger pot, but if it's in a 25 gallon, there's really nowhere, not many places to go from there. Right. Um, so you would prune the roots. Okay. Uh, you know, you take the tips off that are starting to, you know, reach the edges of that pot. And then at the same time, you want to take a proportionate amount of material off the top of the plant. So, you know, if you were to take off 10% of the root system, you then want to take off 10% of the above ground growth of the plant. So it's not having to work harder to get you know nutrients to those those higher places um, and the other option to that is to get a woven pot and it's made made out of a mesh like an interwoven fabric where air is able to pass through those that mesh and the roots are also able to grow into the mesh and so what happens the roots will instead of growing along the side of the pot they'll start to grow into the wall and then at a point reach that air layer and when roots are exposed to just uh you know the atmosphere they will die off and so that prunes the tips of the roots constantly okay um but still allows them to continue growing and then that'll keep your plant from producing more foliage than the pot can handle. It'll constantly be pruning the roots so the plant just won't grow as big. So, you know, that's something to consider. It's a lot easier than pruning the roots. The only thing about the woven pots is they dry out faster. So, you know, you really need to stay on, especially a 25 gallon pot, you know, okay. you, that'd be at least twice a day irrigation. So lots of things to consider, but it's also, you have lots of options for, you know, anything you really want to do. You know, if you want to grow a tree out, you can plant it in your yard, let it get massive. You know, you can grow it in a pot. Uh, some trees you can even, you know, grow inside your house. You know, a lot of citrus are really good just as a, a porch plant. If you don't have a lot of space, you know, you put a Meyer lemon in a pot, it stays small and, you know, uh, as I've said, citrus really prefer a bit of shade. And so, you know, not being out in the full sun, you know, they can, they can thrive in that. Okay. Is this something that can be pruned down? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It is a very fast growing tree. You could cut, you could cut all this off and it would shoot right back up. And you can see like down here, it's starting to bud. Right. So regardless of what you do with this, I would give this a good prune just with the size of the pot that it's in now right you know taking off you know a lot of these top branches um letting it put some more strength in the trunk because uh, it is you know it's a small small trunk for such a large plant right now and that's because the roots aren't really able to get any you know 
size on the root system. Right. So where would you prune this? Down low? Or just get rid of all the... No, I would take maybe 10% off okay. the top. And then what I like to do is take any branches that are growing towards the center of the tree. Okay. So, you know, this one right here is growing up towards the middle. Um, and even these little ones here. And what that's going to do is open up the tree when it, you know, is full of leaves to a lot of airflow. Um, when you have lots of leaves around the center of the tree, you know, it, it can be more conducive to fungus. Um, but also, opening up the middle allows that light to pass through and reach the lower leaves. So then it becomes more full. Um, if you just have a dense canopy up top, you know, with the middle uh, full of foliage, uh, that light won't be able to get down here. And you can see it's, it's trying to become a little bit bushy, like it's sending out small branches lower. Um, and that's because at this time, it's got full sun all the way down the plant. So if you uh, leave that open, it'll continue to do that. But eventually these will put out more foliage. Well, actually, these branches are, are toast. No green there. Okay. But these are probably still good. Well, how long have you had this tree? I've had this tree uh, six months or so. A little backstory on this tree. The second hurricane we got, which was November, I think, last year. Yeah. Um, the one that tore through St. Pete or uh, Fort Myers. Uh, I forget. This one blew in the in the pool. Though this whole tree. This the top of this was sitting in the pool. Oh. So. Is it a uh, chlorinated pool? It is chlorinated. So I heavily watered it day after day after day to hopefully flush it out. Yeah. Um, so whether that, uh, I'm sure it did something to it, but I mean, we've got, these don't look too bad up here. No, the new growth up there. So I just checked this branch pretty much. So I have green down here, Okay. but everything else is pretty much done. Okay. Uh, so I would prune this branch, you know, okay. down to where the green is, and then maybe just take these little uh, scraggly branches off this main, but leave this main and uh, this piece going. Because it is actually starting to put out flowers, which aren't always a sign of good health. You know, sometimes plants produce or flower and produce fruit when they feel like they're about to die, and they're like, well, if I'm gonna, if I'm not gonna make it, I got to make some offspring to succeed okay. me. Um, so, but, you know, it doesn't look like, if it's been out of the water for several months and it's not dead, and it'll I, definitely come I kept back. it in this kind of wicking station, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, so that it, it, you know, even when I maybe didn't have an opportunity to water it twice a day, it was still kind of sitting in water. Um, and I don't, I mean, you just felt down there. Was it, was it pretty dry or? Yeah, well, there's not much water left in the pool. It yeah. Like, um, yeah, and I mean, that's, that's fine for the strawberry tree and the sea grape. You just, when you make a wicking system, you have to make sure the plants you're putting in it, you know, like having access to constant water like that. And then you also have to think about like, what kind of soil is in the pot? Is it conducive for wicking up water? Like for moisture wicking in a pot, really what you'd want is like um, something that's high in like peat moss or coconut core, something that, you know, absorbs and holds a lot of water and will, you know, wick it up from that bottom into where the roots are. Um, this looks, you know, mostly like a typical potting soil that has lots of large, you know, woody pieces and forest matter, which is a great, you know, it's a fine potting soil, but it doesn't work very well at, you know, wicking water up okay. from a lower point. Um, but it's a good experiment. Thank you for watching Mike's in the Garden. To check out all of our clips and videos with our walk and talk with Sam Igo from Central Florida Abundance, click on the link in description below. We have a whole playlist and Please feel free to comment with any questions, reach out to Sam, and please like and subscribe.
more great content from Mike's in the Garden and my central Florida food forest. Peace and love, everybody.